Today, I almost fall asleep. God, so boring, so boring. We're getting technical. It's time to get down and nerdy. See what I did there? Down and nerdy. And my girlfriend doesn't like my nuts. I just... I just don't really like his ginger colored nuts. What's good is the hunter off the back with insane content! In this video, I heard my girlfriend say something. One thing led to another, and now my car has new wheel studs and wheel nuts. A bit of a miscommunication. Let's see what happened. I just, I just don't really like his ginger colored nuts, if you know what I mean. I just, I prefer more like black shiny nuts. Yeah. She doesn't like my ginger colored nuts. Maybe I should get some black shiny nuts. Oh yeah, that's better. I still wonder why she wanted to put these in her mouth. So we're back on the M2. We're gonna do a wheel stud conversion. Wait a minute! You already made a video about a wheel stud conversion for the M2. Yeah, I know, but I wasn't really satisfied with those. These ones are super corroded, and my girlfriend prefers black shiny nuts, apparently. So my friends over at MMR Performance hooked me up with these bad boys. Furthermore, I was also a bit of a noob making that initial video. I really like the looks and quality of the studs and nuts. So besides the kit, these are the tools you'll be needing throughout the process. Brake cleaner, medium strength Loctite, brushes to clean the hub threads, a torque wrench for the studs capable of torquing 25 foot-pounds. Oh god, so boring, so boring. So let's speed up the tempo and f***ing do this! Alright, so to properly jack up the car, we're gonna use this. This is a jack pad adapter made by PowerFlex. And with this, you can properly jack up your BMW or your Mini. It simply slides in the jacking point over there, so that you can properly jack up your car. Alright, so unlike your mom, this jack isn't low enough to reach under the car. So we're gonna use one of these. This is a tire cushion made by Tire Docks, and we're gonna drive the car up on one of these to get it a bit higher in the air, so that we can put the jack under there. So before jacking up the car, we're first going to loosen the current wheel nuts, the rusty ginger ones. And now it's a matter of taking off the wheel. Those are some rusty nuts. I mean, look at these nuts. These are pretty much done. Alright, so next up we're going to remove these corroded studs. There we go. So these are off the car. And these are going onto the car. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So this is what the old ones weigh. And this is what the new ones weigh. Weight savings, baby. Weight savings. All right, so now we're gonna simply put these studs in and reassemble everything. No, of course not. We're gonna do it properly. We're first gonna clean up the hub. We're gonna clean the threads very thoroughly. Then we're gonna prepare the studs and then we're gonna reassemble everything. All right, so first we're gonna use the wire wheel with some brake cleaner. All 
right, so that's the face of the hub cleaned. All right, so the most important thing here is to clean the threads. So as per my last video, we're gonna use these brushes again, but we're now also gonna use this extreme degreaser. Extreme, baby. So we're gonna fill up these holes with this nasty stuff. That's what she said. And then clean them out with these brushes. Then clean it with some brake cleaner. All right, so you might think these are clean now, but let me show you what I can still extract with this tool and towel. See, that's all gun coming out of these threads. All right, so after repeating the process off camera once more, no, it's repeating or doing it once more not repeating it once more. After repeating the process off camera, these are the results. So these threads are clean enough. All right, so now that the threads are clean, we're gonna prepare the studs. We're first gonna apply some degreaser on the end of the studs. And then with a clean towel, we're gonna dry them properly. And also the other ones. So after preparing the studs, the next step would be to apply Loctite to the studs before screwing them in the hubs. So, which one to use? It's time to get down and nerdy. See what I did there? Down and nerdy. Anyway, so we, we've got ourselves blue Loctite, which is obviously medium strength. We've got ourselves red Loctite, which is high strength. And we've got ourselves this. This is Permatex Threat Locker Red. So previously I used blue Loctite, but it occurred multiple times that the studs came out when undoing the nuts. Speeds and when turning the wheel at standstill. So we're gonna jack up the car and remove the wheel. Bolted the subrain down provisionally. You may have noted that most of the studs came out when removing the rear wheels, mostly because the nuts were corroded stuck on the studs. So I removed all the studs, cleaned them up and refitted them to spec with Loctite in the cleaned up hubs. And did the same on the other side. Even now, these nuts came out with the studs in them. So yeah, Loctite medium strength isn't doing it for me. So for me, it would be logical to up the strength to Loctite red. Way more torque is required to undo studs when red Loctite is applied. The problem with these two, and now we're getting really nerdy, is the maximum operating temperature. So for both of these, it's 150 degrees Celsius. Now, the hubs of the car can exceed that temperature, especially when driving very hard. I'm not planning on tracking my car, but I am planning on driving it hard on the streets, possibly exceeding that temperature, making the Loctite lose effect. So the logical solution for me was this. This Permatex Thread Locker Red is a high temperature one. So the maximum temperature of this Thread Locker is 232 degrees Celsius, which is a good 80 degrees Celsius higher than these two. Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three, quick mess. So for the purposes of my car, this should suffice. So let's get on with installing the studs in the hubs after a lesson of thread lockers. High temperature, high strength. Let's go. Damn, I'm good. They're gonna love this. All right, to apply the thread locker, you would only need a very small drop. That's more than enough. So then hand thread these in and then out to see if the thread locker distributes evenly, which it does. Then repeat the process for the other four. And before the thread locker cures, we're gonna torque these down to 55 Newton meters. And obviously repeat the process for all the other wheels. All right, so after letting the thread locker cure for around 20 to 30 minutes, it's now time to put back on the wheel. So first we're gonna put on some silicon-based anti-seas. Make sure to not touch the threads of the studs. Then it's time to put this bad boy on. And then to continue with these black shiny nuts. All right, so after initially securing these with the breaker bar, we're gonna do the same obviously to the rear wheel. Then we're going to drop the car down, tighten the wheel nuts to spec, and that's a job well done. Yeah. 
Sick editing, right? Alright, that was it. I want to thank my friends over at MMR Performance for sponsoring the video. We set up a small discount code for you guys, so make sure to check them out. Speaking of checking out, Check out this insane merch! Make sure to get yourself one to help out the rebuild of the M2. Speaking of the rebuild of the M2, here's a little sneak peek of what's coming. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time! So for both these, it's a 300, 300 degrees front. A 300, 300, so for both of these, it's 300 degree, Jesus. So for both of these, it's 300 degree, 300 degree, Jesus. So for both of these, so for both of these, it's 300 degrees, <laughs> okay, 150 degrees Celsius. So for both of these, it's 150 degrees Celsius.